Hello, welcome to Show Studio. <laughs> um, I'm Dina Boracic and um, today we're discussing Sunny, as we all agreed to call them. Um, but before we talk about anything further, I'll let my beautiful panelists introduce themselves. Um, I'm Anthony Campbell. I have a menswear label called Park. I'm Londi. Uh, I'm one of the founders of Vintage Store at Tejo, and I'm also a stylist. Um, I'm Lara Johnson Miller. I am a freelance writer, editor, and broadcaster. I'm Puria Farsane, and I do Puria Farsane. <laughs> <laughs> Easy peasy. Um, well, thank you so much, everyone, for coming on this lovely slash kind of rainy Sunday. Um, but today, yeah, as I said, today we're discussing Sunny as a brand, and um, who just showed a few hours ago in Milan uh, during Milan Fashion Week, and. Yeah, so what I want to talk to you about today is what it means um, to be a young emerging brand in Milan. Um, there's only a few that I can name that are kind of making any kind of notice. There's Magliano, who's quite new. Um, there's Sine, there's M1992, Edith Marcel, so that was a kind of my quick scan of the schedule, and these are the people that have existed for like four to five years max and are kind of showing something that's relevant in the world right now. Um, they're kind of spearheading this new generation of Italian brands. Um, there's obviously Marni, who is kind of keeping it fresh with what, um, what it means to be Italian um, in fashion. And then, um, yeah, I also want to talk to you about how important is Milan Fashion Week right now on the whole schedule, especially with what's happening with Pitti with how it's developing and kind of how it's taking the main role of Italian fashion. Um, who are the people that you think are pushing forward Italian fashion and also can Sine kind of single-handedly move the, change the way the world works, thinks about Milan and Italian fashion. So just to give a little bit of intro on Sunny, um, sorry, I've been calling him Sine or Sunny. Oh, that is going to be Sunny. Sunny. I apologize. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so Sunny's been, um, it was founded in 2015 by Loris uh, Messina and Simona Rizzo. Um, they were both come from uh, marketing slash business backgrounds, which is quite interesting and I think apparent in what they do. Supposedly, they wanted to start a, uh, launch a startup, but instead of that, they decided to start a brand. Um, quite quickly, uh, Sunny has established itself for what it is and for what, what we know it today. So the stripes, the boxy silhouettes, the kind of funny, sarcastic, ironic take on fashion, still kind of keeping in with like classic made in Italy um, and kind of changing what it means that label made in Italy. Um, yeah, and obviously, as the time goes on, they've gained quite a lot of attention, firstly in South Korea and Asia, then later in Europe, and I think now kind of Italy's catching up and seeing what they have on their hand. Um, obviously, there's quite a few big moments that they had, like via social media, and that's what they kind of like to establish themselves as, that most people know about Sunny through Instagram which is another interesting point to discuss. Um, at that point, I'm leading, leaving it to you guys to kind of give us your bits and bobs of what you think about it, and then we can talk about later about the collection that just happened earlier. So yeah, so what can, what can you say? What is your take on Sunny? What do you like about it? What do you think is interesting? I wanted to pick up on something that you said in your nice long intro. Thanks, Tino. <laughs> I, wanted to, I was really interested that you said that um, you feel like um, you know, Sunny is pushing what it means to be an Italian brand, and it's kind of changing that. Whereas, I mean, I'm not, you know, my sort of familiarity with the Milan designers is relatively limited, but I don't necessarily feel like it's making a kind of like, cataclysmic change. It does, and what I like about Sunny is it does feel like it's kind of continuing that tradition of um, Italian menswear, um, elevating it, but not necessarily like shaking the system, I don't know. No, it has a sense of youth about it, I think, mm. and the playful qualities, I think, keep it kind of relevant. But I think um, so what Marnie's doing um, kind of works really well with that. It doesn't seem like Sonny's, like, necessarily so stand out, but I think it kind of, it, it's, it's got this, um, it's got a sense, like Marnie, that it kind of works with the other brands on the schedule. Uh, yeah, I think there is something to that. I also do think that 
oh, every sunny collection mm. does look like it's part of one big story, mm. which I think is good. It's commercially yeah. smart, yeah, I and it's developing that. a language that they are developing. But it is there is something to say that they do, don't come from design backgrounds, mm. and that they are marketing experts, which is seen like you know if you see a really large stripe on a top or a full outfit, you know that that will be. Sunny. Oh, sunny. Mm. And I think it's easy, easy to sell in a way because it's kind of graphic and you can see it on like e-com websites. You can see that it's kind of like very recognizable. Mm. It's super wearable as well. Yeah. Because, and it, yeah. it's not necessarily design, it's more kind of fashion and marketing. Mm. Kind of yeah. I think accessible. as well it always, for me, ever since I, I saw it for the first time, has this very polished aesthetic. Mm. Um, yeah, again, in keeping with what Lara said, it's still continuing with this Italian journey. However, it always has this polish, well, their own aesthetic here, and you can see that continuously. Mm. I mean, I think when Sunny first like, came into my consciousness, um, I was sort of told about the label in terms of like, oh, you know, this is really something new in Milan. But I can't imagine, you know, looking at this collection and seeing it on a catwalk in London. Mm -hmm. or on a catwalk in, mm. in New York or whatever. Do you know, it, it still seems to me to be, well, even very European, and it has this very European There's a level link. of refinement. I think it's, yeah, it's quite refreshing, though, how I feel like, I think they're having quite an honest journey, like, mm. with their, like, design, um, with their path at the moment, because I, I don't think they're trying to be, like, super edgy and no. super cool, you know? It yeah. feels like they're being super honest in the fact that they are Italian, they are luxury, and it's not, like, groundbreaking... Um, stuff, but like they're sticking to what they know, mm -hmm. and I think that, like what you said, like that places them like in a different part of Milan, but not necessarily like in this like groundbreaking like way. But that's also valid, I think. Yeah, of, yeah. yeah that. I think it's super important for young brands to find that place. Also, it doesn't mm. have to be this sort of groundbreaking yeah, innov innovation yeah. in that way, or it can be something that's a believable product. Exactly, yeah. And then I think it's longer lasting as well, like it doesn't feel like it's a trend. Yeah. yeah. You know, it feels like they're taking their time, like, and it is like, um, what is it, it's like collective dressing, I think like everyone keeps referring to them as, yeah. so it's like they're on this path to create like a different dynamic of like wearability within luxury fashion, yeah. you know, which I think is, is great and it's like, it's just, it feels refreshing, I think, after like having luxury design be so trend-led, mm. I think almost, you know, like we're getting to this path where it's almost like fast fashion yeah. and luxury fashion are like going in a blending way. Yeah. So I think this is a really um, great place for them to come from. They did a couple of seasons ago, um, they launched women's wear and obviously they started as a men's wear brand, that was the focus. But because that aesthetic, as you guys know, said, it is kind of like almost, like universal in a way, like it's kind of easy, easy to understand that there is, a, it doesn't take a manual to understand what these clothes do. I think it kind of served itself to this kind of unisex mm. um, world. And they have been doing women's wear for a couple of seasons and it does blend, as in the collection that we've seen today, it does blend into one big story as well. Um, one big thing, as I already mentioned that as a question, how do you see Milan currently in comparison to Pitti as a destination? Um, what is kind of the, you know, I feel like Milan was always about these really established brands and now it feels like even the established brands are kind of going away from Milan and going into Pitti or other places. How, what are your, um, yeah, what are your takes on that? What, what do you feel like, what is really good about Milan right now, if there is any? <laughs> I mean, I think, I think you're, you're really big in telling me that you. Oh, um, I don't know. I'm just maybe I'm speaking from like first hand, but yeah. um, I don't think you could pay me. <laughs> my word. Don't pay me. <laughs> Is that recorded now? <laughs> on on uh, on air. On air. Um, I mean. It's also just a hub for the big players, for Prada, for Versace, for Philip Klein. And it's very, very difficult to be able to seep past all of that because, you know, once you're established and you have that demographic and you have those expectations every season, it's kind of hard to have anything breaking through that. And it is difficult being emerging anywhere in the world so to be able to you know say something I think is is really important 
However, for me, um, I, I just don't find it an inspirational place. place. Um, when I look at something, especially when it's clothing, I want to feel something, because um, otherwise, what's the yeah. point? You can make collection after collection and push commercial yeah. Yeah. budgets and whatever, but um, it's not groundbreaking. If, yeah. And I wonder if that's sort of why people are looking at Sunny so much as um, you know, a brand that is saying something. When I'm not, I'm, I mean, I don't think that they're, what they're trying to do is like intellectualize mm. their clothes or give you a like, particularly emotional response. But I wonder if it's because, you know, in the sphere that is Milan, that is kind of about the commerce and the big business, mm. that yeah. you know, people are trying to find that. And perhaps, you know, critics are trying to write that into the yeah. narrative of Milan. I think there is something to say, though, like if you, there is something to say, like by seeing two things against each other. And what Sunny does is they're so kind of unapologetically kind of taking the piss mm -hmm. in a way where it's like seeing it next to, you know, between a Versace show and mm -hmm. a Etra show and all these serious big fashion houses that have years and years of heritage that kind of follows them. There is something to say about them, you know, taking when they did took the piss out of Dior, when we should all be Sine, yeah. Sunny, yeah. Um, taking the piss of the feminist t-shirt and stuff like that. It kind of is like almost make in the surrounding of Milan, their humor comes through even more yeah. and shines a bit further. It's a moment of like mm. relief actually yeah. within that schedule, I think. Yeah. And it's almost a question like whether if you would see us, Lara mentioned it, whether if you would see it in Milan, in uh, sorry Paris or London whether it would get as much attraction mm. as it does in Milan. Can we look at the... I don't think it would. The, I mean, yeah. Um, I hate fashion. Sorry? I, well, I hate fashion yeah. t-shirt. Yeah, so reason. that's a really good reference um, in this collection, which I really want to talk about as well. Um, it's uh, that t-shirt, I hate fashion, is a reference from an archival photo from 1990, 1995, sorry, from Wigstock Festival, um, which is a drag um, festival, um, kind of drag event in New York that's been going on since the 80s. Um, with like Lady Bunny and RuPaul and all these big drag queens, which is kind of quite a big statement if you think about um, the referencing. Yeah, the mm. referencing something so unapologetically queer in Milan, which is so often about this kind of hyper masculinity. If you look at Philip Pline and look at all this, you know, charged mm. masculinity through a shot, like it's just it just oozes that kind of energy. Yeah, Even of Versace, which is quite like out like Already, outrageous yeah. it still yeah. has quite a lot of masculinity in there this is obviously such a queer reference and they were so clear with it that they put it on their uh, press release yeah. saying you know this is what we reference what do we think that you know that means like taking this really queer reference and putting it on milan fashion week um on the catwalk of milan fashion week i'm a little bit torn about what this um what this means like I'm not professing to be completely educated about this. I'm just I'm questioning a bit because obviously it is you know they have a marketing background. That's where they come from, um, and you know there's we you know we're having very you know big moral conversations about you know the commercialization of pride and taking yeah. you know elements of that and, and this is kind of and using it for marketing exactly yeah. and this is exactly a you know a marketing move. I mean I can imagine you know fashion editors from all over the world who necessar don't necessarily kind of, um, you know, aren't necessarily so entwined with that, that conversation and, you know, Instagramming this as just it being kind of like a, a, a nod and like a little bit of a yeah. tee-hee, what a joke, we're at a fashion show and there's a show that, uh, there's a top that says, I hate fashion. You know, I'm so I think the main thing about as well, how this would come across. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I agree with that because I think the main thing of it is like, it's not reflected in their clothes. Like, mm. you know, the guy is wearing mm, a beige, smart. like yeah. fully covered. Like, <laughs> there is no, there is nothing like queer, and there is nothing really like um, less masculine about that outfit. I don't think. I mean, to an extent, maybe, but I don't really. I feel like the show still feels like. Um, it's not commercial, but it still feels like it's still hitting their customer and hitting their target market. And then putting that is a marketing tool, you know, on there. I'm not sure about, you know, like, it, you know, it doesn't look queer enough, that outfit. I'm not sure about that. But I do think that the, the point of, you know, having this in this um, collection, which you're right, just looks kind of very commercial. These are pieces that people are going to want to buy and, and, and it's part of the system. And, you know, we referenced if this was 
in London. And what we see in London are these kind of, you know, very, very groundbreaking shows. And we have so many incredible brands who show non-binary work and celebrate um, the queer community. And this feels a bit off, kind of after seeing, you know, so much of what we saw in, in London this season. I don't know. I don't know. I, um, sorry. Go for it, go I just... I understand why they did that. Mm. Sometimes when you're trying to be make a point, the only way to do it is just do it. Mm. And I understand it kind, kind of seems a little bit like tacky and random and it's like, oh, we're going to put this slogan. And I hate slogans. I think they should <laughs> die. Um, that, so, that on a I hate slogans. Yeah. Uh, however, life, however yeah. sometimes there's no way that you can be subtle yeah. and become pretentious about mm. it. Therefore, the least pretentious way that you can be is just to be honest. Mm. And I don't really think there's much behind that, really. They just wanted to they say something, and that was the only way. Mm. So here we, here we go. And I, I'm speaking from, from experience, mm. and it's like, whatever. Yeah, I mean, it's, it is, there is something to say about kind of the timing of it and obviously being um, 50 years of Stonewall mm. and being Pride Month and all of that and kind of putting something that's into the show. I get both kind of yeah. views. Yeah, yeah, But I, there is something to say because they have this consistent conversation about slogan T-shirts and they right. kind of yeah. reposition what logos mean. And yeah. I think Italian fashion of all like fashion industries is most known for its logos. Mm -hmm. Whether you want Versace, whether you want, want Prada even, you know, you mm -hmm. have these logos that are now everywhere and it, like Italians are taking the lead with it. Yeah. So kind of they're almost subverting that idea by putting it in these funny ways and On which a really is, beige yeah. t-shirt, yeah. really plain typography. Yeah. Like, yeah, exactly. And it's it's been going for several seasons. So yeah. Can you know the t-shirt that you referenced before, the we should all be sunny t-shirt. And I'm I'm just a, I was just a bit confused about that top when I first saw it. It's like, okay, so they're riffing on Maria Grazia yeah. having used to um, to Amanda Negozzi Adice's slogan anyway. Like it's just again like quite a if you're going to riff on a designer's yeah, slogan no. top, that one that's already had so much conversation about it, you know, she yeah. was kind of slated yeah. um, for, for yeah, appropriating absolutely. that slogan. It just, I'm, I mean, you know, suddenly they have this very, like, kind of, like, tongue-in-cheek whatever thing. Um, but it is, I don't know, it's kind of curious to me. I would be really interested to know what their motives were. Like, why did they choose? it's just about the marketing. It'd be nice yeah. if the tongue-in-cheekness really was, like, like is that original, I think. Like, mm. it all kind of feels like they're taking from it. of a reference. Mm. Yeah. So, mm. that's fashion in, until yeah. we go to the ground. So, yeah. that's the way you yeah. go. Then, again, you know, we were talking about, so their, their whole shtick is the marketing. Mm. And it, it feels a bit like, um, in the beginning, what they were so good at was... Let me think about this. <laughs> what I wanted, I felt like in the beginning, what they were so good at was kind of um, rather than creating, you know, how like Jacques Moo creates this like sort oh, of energy. fantasy thing. Mm. Like, yeah, what the lifestyle. They, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Makes it like a lifestyle brand. What, what I thought they were doing really well with um, pulling on the marketing side and using their clothes was that they were creating a brand that was more about the reality, about the reality of who their customers were and, and wearing these pieces. And I thought that was done... Yeah, I mean, these... I mean, it's like... Surreal. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, like I'm a massive like, bag. I like, contradict me immediately. Like, no, I, I, I understand what you mean. you know what, what I mean? mean. You know, and, and I just yeah. feel like when you get it a bit wrong with um, kind of appropriating other people's jokes or whatever, that's when that kind of slightly crumbles. But I don't think it's... Um, I, I don't think it's such a huge weakness for the brand. I think they still have. No, much and they more do strength. profess this idea of playfulness, and so maybe mm. we're, in a way we could be reading yeah. so too much into yeah. it. Yeah, also. absolutely. Like, we yeah. definitely yeah. 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 Like you were saying, it could just be that they yeah. thought we really like that and we yeah. want to do it. Why yeah. not? Yeah. Like, yeah, I think it's, it's well, hard because you don't know. Like, I don't think you want. I think there is something to say, like about putting that again. If that T-shirt just was in there. There's a difference between slapping the image, the original image of someone wearing it at Wakestock on your press release. There is something here that is kind of, you know, obviously they want to make a statement, mm. which is great. And they, we should all, like, shows should be used for making statements, absolutely. Mm. But then it's kind of like the conversation that 
further said. I do want to mention um, one thing that they, um, which you kind of all caught up on, is that um, what they described, there's some, such thing as sprezzatura, which in Italian means um, studied carelessness. It's one of those words like hige yeah. and stuff like that. And it kind of does embody this Italian, mm. uh, like, bohem idea of like, oh, we, we're playful and funny. and. Um, but like on purpose, but trying to make it yeah. look like it's not, yeah. which I do think that they embody. Yeah. Um, the space that it was shown in today, it's I think it's really cool. important to talk about, yeah. Yeah. is they kind of, it's their new headquarters, I guess, which are the, they're calling Bianco Sune. So it's a massive um, repurposed industrial space, which after today's show will become a multidisciplinary um, exhibition space, um, hosting artists and shows and performances and, um, yeah, kind of creating a sense of community between what Sunny mm. is. I'm still really conscious that I've been constantly saying between Sine and Sunny. <laughs> so, but Even again, I, please accept my apologies. Um, but yeah, so what do you think that Bianco Sunny is going to do? Do you think it's, you know, obviously there's Fondazione Prada in Milan yeah. as well, which is a yeah. similar sensibility to kind of creating a brand and then a space where people that like that brand can go to. But I think a space like that by a brand like this offers accessibility to youth, to younger people, to younger 100%. artists, to younger yeah. designers. And I think that's the most exciting part about it. It's, it's not Prada, it's like, mm. you know, people will feel more that they can, you know, contact them virtual. and yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And I think this reflects what like we've been talking about, like SNA like actually doing anything and like what are they doing creatively? And, and this to is something out. they are doing. And this is like them this doing is it. it you yeah, know? this is it. Like they're gonna use that space to work with like Milan creatives and like and build and create like um, I guess ideas that there hasn't been a, a, an opportunity to do at the yeah. moment in Milan, yeah. which is great. Like, have they said anything about what the kind of program would be like? Do you have any idea? Because that would be really interesting, you know, to see what they kind what of can, yeah, yeah. Mm. and who they're interested in, like what kind of. Is they haven't really... announced. I know that it was announced in WWD first, mm. but they haven't announced any names, at least mm. to my knowledge. But I think what is it's kind of the the changing nature of Milan is what they want to mm. capture with that. Yeah. And it's, it's interestingly in zone three of Milan and kind of, it's almost the, yeah, it's almost not the, you know, not the central part of Milan where everyone, sure. every tourist will go. This is, this will, you know, if you really want to go here, it will take effort and yeah. thought. Like kind of thought into going. Going you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But there isn't a space like that in Milan, so maybe that's what's really exciting. And mm. actually that they're sort of ahead of that. And like you were saying earlier, we were talking about Florence, Pitti is really exciting at the moment, yeah. and that's offering that space to yeah. new designers. So maybe this is like building the whole Italian fashion scene, yeah. actually, if it's going to be about Florence. Yeah. And there's then this going on in Milan, like how exciting, like yeah. what a shift, yeah. what a shift. And I suppose it also is kind of a direct, um, like competitive move with Pitti, because Pitti are doing so well at, um, you know, incorporating mm -hmm. art into, mm -hmm sort of the, the program and why they're kind of like getting people in and yeah it's a nice move does anybody know like if if we contextualize sunny in milan do, do you know any or no, no but do you consider any other brands that kind of can compete in a similar realm to them or if there is another brand that you think in milan is kind of pushing the conversation forward i mean we've already kind of said it but i, I mean money of course yeah, yeah. um I'll take that silence as a really significant <laughs> yeah, answer. Yeah, I mean, it's no, I mean, it is a point to make. Absolutely, yeah. there is not. Yeah. Like a but do you know what I think that is? What's that great word that you gave us? The sprezzatura. Sprezzatura. I think it's the the sprezzatura thing, and I think that's what both Marnie and Sunny are, are doing really well. I mean, like that you know, these amazing. really exaggerated mm -hmm. platforms. Should we go like, through the collection? Yeah. Let's like, go look, from the it's, top. It's so I think Spice if Girls we... Reunion. Like, what? Yeah. 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 Did you? It was amazing. <laughs> What's that? Should we just, should we just talk about Spice Girls? I mean, fair. <laughs> no, I mean. Um, so, yeah, so should we just open the. So, the collection opened with this but really. Why big... didn't they do, like, Sunday Up Your Life? You know? Sunday Up Your Life. Sunday Up Your Life. There you go. Right to them. They need me. They're taking them. Um, yeah. So they opened with this kind of really long, uh, long line trench coat with mm. a little denim hat. And kind of it went into three sections with color. As we talked before, stripes are such a big yeah. signature of theirs. And I think it's really interesting what you do as all part, like you have a signature textile that your brand is now like kind of connected with. Um, what do you think it means kind of in 
buying terms and in what does that textile you know bring to the conversation well i think it's important to have a signature no matter what practice you're in in life in music and art and in fashion because your signature is something that people will always come back to um, and here i mean i see there's this reference actually there's a, an elasticated waist belt that reminds me of one of Craig Green's collections, and I don't know if that is actually a reference, <laughs> um, but it's, there you go, that's, yeah. that's Craig's, um, yeah, this, there yeah. you go, yeah. and it's yeah. used again um, in, in the beginning, and I see it further down in the collection as well. I mean, it works really nicely in this look, mm. but, you know, that's somebody else's signature, and yeah, that's fine, you know, like I said, we recycle and, and move, move forward, but um, it is important. And what I can say here, like for me, as not knowing this brand properly, I'd say obviously the slogan things would be a signature or the way that the whole silhouette is very emphasized. Yeah. Um, in the beginning for me, it started a little bit religious. Yeah. I don't know, it seemed quite if we can go back up to the white looks, um, especially with the, mm, the, the head, it's yeah. quite popey for me. Yeah. And, and that's mm. nice, you know. I think what's really important, again, going back to this whole Milan situation, is that until you conquer your home ground, yeah. you will yeah. never conquer anywhere else. Mm. And it's important to stand where they're from and, and really own that. Mm. So it's nice to see some Italian references. That's what I, th what I think yeah. where that's come from. Um, but for me, I don't actually see an actual signature yeah. coming from this. For me, I can't say, okay, I look at this jacket and it's Sanai, you know, yeah. like there's nothing that's like, and sometimes it doesn't need to be obvious. But for me, if I look at something and I'm like, oh, that elasticated waistband looks like Craig Green. Mm you know, there should be more effort into um, stabilizing something that people will refer back to. Yeah. Um, one thing that I think they're quite strong as is now the accessories, which yeah. I think is yeah. developed. The bag, the bag, I guess. Yeah. 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 yeah, I mean, if you mentioned the bag, I uh, completely forgot, but yeah, I, I yeah, completely, the bag would be exactly. the and reference it, for me, yeah. And I've got separately. the sneakers now like as well. It's a different yeah. reference. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, it's like they have uh, bags, shoes, now they've developed a trainer, mm. and th those are the things that also buyers have picked up on. Mm. So they've been selling those, like bags have been their biggest kind of seller at Browns, you see like of the whole category that they like Brown's bought of theirs you know there's like three four bags a few pairs of shoes and yeah, then like a the few exclusive. pieces of clothing which is an interesting way of um, was this their debut of jewelry as well wasn't it like in I think for spring summer 20 yeah it's the women's is jewelry is yeah. quite chunky yeah. And, um, yeah but there is that emphasized silhouette which kind of comes through in the bags like that bag like the oversized striped bag um, and then the really, really tall kind of platforms for girls, like a sandal Love platform. Um, what I think was really great in this collection, personally, was the knitwear, and there was... Yeah, the um, line. Was yeah, that amazing yeah. Really and there was some references to their first collections, their first ever show that had like a full knitted look. Mm. And there was a few looks here, which were kind of both men's and women's. There's like those massive long line dresses for girls. And um, for oh, one in the middle, yeah. 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 I think it's a particularly strong look. Um, because it kind of like ha ha makes a statement without yeah. without being without putting a slogan necessarily. Totally, and sure. I think they're strong at color. Actually, I think that is something that uh, you could give them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah their color they're, is slightly they're, 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 yeah. they're really confident. They always with color. nail their palettes, don't they? Expresses that playful quality they mm. want to profess. I mean, sorry, sorry, you go. Ahead. <laughs> you, okay, no, okay. <laughs> but I mean, there are you know there are brands as well who are working with palettes like this. I mean, like Cees Marshall. I was literally yeah. just about to say like yeah. I remember last year and like obviously. See, again as a as a first look point yeah. of view Visual, yeah. I hated that neon green like if I ever way. saw that neon I green then I want to I'm sorry I'm referencing Prada <laughs> here I'm sorry Prada but for the first week fantastic but that's yet again yeah. a great example of something that's gone Worldwide. Totally. I mean, how many times did we see that neon collection <laughs> everywhere? It was everywhere. <laughs> but here, like, I, I loved that lime green. I think it, it's come back and it's come back stronger. And this is, and it works for me yeah. here because um, 
on Monday at, at my shows, well, I, I use yeah. acidic yellow, and, mm. and, I, and I love that. And there's just something so garish and daring about yeah. these kind of colours, and it's, you have to be brave to, yeah. to use these. But I think you can't, you, you know, you can't ignore the effect no. that, like, Instagram has had on, oh, like, peddling yeah. this palette. Yeah. Like, I mean, victim right here, like... I'm wearing the socks. Yeah. Yeah. Like, so. The T-shirt. <laughs> like, we'll, you know, we'll get, but, but, and, <sighs> but you can't... It's such, like, it's such an obvious nod to Shut what you're nails, looking at. Shut Lara. <laughs> <laughs> but you do know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah, oops. <laughs> My new Prada skirt. Yeah. But, like, you know, it shows that... People, you know, people are looking at each other and people are looking at each other's worlds and they so clearly do that like, yeah. with the Instagram. You can see that they're kind of, you know, they're not just like living in a, a bubble vacuum. They are looking at what other people are yeah. wearing and doing. Yeah. And they are really reactive to that, aren't they? Like, I mean, they know, and then they make it them slight. Their content is is great on Instagram mm. because, like, they obviously know how know to take something, yeah, yeah, and then kind of use it to their, but like, use it in their yeah. own way, yeah. you know. So, like, turn it around so it makes sense for their yeah. customer and for their brand. So you're not just copying, like, and even the colors. you know, their their uh, stories. <laughs> sorry, yeah, <laughs> even, like their stories before the Instagram show. Instagram stories, yeah. yeah. Sorry, even yeah. their Instagram stories. Yeah, they're telling me the some ones tales. About the, to showing the venue. Exactly, you mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's a such mood. A it's such a mood. I mean, yeah. they must have a brilliant social media editor. <laughs> but they have, like, a real, you know, eye for what they want to show. Like, they showed um, sort of, I don't know, paint um, with, like, a stream blowing in the wind. Like, mm. yeah, you know, you can see on screen there's... They, it, it's much about much more about setting a mood, mood and a tone yeah. of what yeah. they want us to see before. It's not... I mean, this is, you know, it's kind of... That kind of marketing at its best... Right, yeah. it's considered, but it's not like I here's an influencer chatting about what they're about. It's to like see a holistic yeah. aesthetic. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's the whole package that sells it that then mm. drives the sales to mm. those sort of classic shapes, I, I mm. guess. And I think when I think when a customer looks at images like that, if that's something that their aesthetic eye is drawn to, they're more likely to buy into the brand. It's also a different way, you know, like this is how they spend their money. They're not going to go and pay Love an X amount of money to be in a magazine on the page of advertising. They're going to spend their money by paying a team of like a digital team that's going to film this. Exactly. You know, and that's, and that's what they talked about quite a lot. I've mm. read in interviews that it's like them saying, you know, we are a digitally led brand and what we're doing is they are in a sense, and that's not to, um, say anything bad about it, but they are Instagram-friendly clothes for people to see and then buy, but mm. also for people to wear and then take photos of themselves. And, you know, this coat, for example, this the striped, striped mm. coat, it's, yeah. whoever it's on, it will make a statement mm. wherever, like, whatever that statement will be, but it will, like, it, it will definitely catch your eye if you see it somewhere. I see you in that, Tina. <laughs> we <laughs> we it over. Um, <laughs> no, but it is Shout beautiful. Out. It's kind of beautiful clothes that I can mm. appreciate. And, it, and I think what they do play well in, it's not a specific aesthetic and it's not a specific age. It's not a specific, like, you know, you can imagine people of different ages wearing that. Mm. Um, Know that there is anything that a certain age can't wear now. We should definitely say that everyone should wear whatever they want. But in terms of like marketing, like strictly like targeting these clothes at a certain age, I wouldn't say they are targeted to like a really really young customer anymore. No. There is quite quite a lot of Italian conservatism in it as well. Yeah. Like, you know, there, there isn't like risque yeah. cutouts or you know. I mean, I was yeah. like mentally comparing it to Jacques Mou, particularly because of like the over and undersized accessories and I guess the kind of looking at like, you know, it feels a bit kind of hanging out in the Cote d'Azur or whatever, you know, if you're, yeah. you're on a yacht, that kind of thing. But the key difference is, I mean, you know, there's a bit of midriff flesh flashing, but it's so not about sex. Mm. Yeah, definitely. No, definitely. Right? None of this collection feels lascivious in any way. That is to say also like that their their main market is Asia and mm. that's like, what I was gonna say exactly, with the yeah. statement pieces. I think yeah. that's why they obviously sell so well because like they have all these like pieces that are just like great like buy now. Yeah, know? they all operate as separates. Yeah. Like I've already shopped through it, the pieces yeah. I would wear and what yeah. I would wear them with. Yeah, so that's a question I would say. Would you wear it yourself? Like if you know if you had an opportunity, would you pick up a sunny jumper? You know what yeah, I think sure. it's great for? I think it's like 
it is, and I said this earlier, but I think it is really like such a good way of like collective dressing. Mm. Like I know if I was to buy something from Sunday, like I would wear it with like so many other people, like layer it yeah, up, totally. you know, wear it in so many different ways. And I think you can do that in a way with like all of the pieces that they make. And that's why it feels um, like it feels like such a great collection in that sense, because it feels like all of it comes together. You know, like all of it, even last season, is meant to be like worn collectively, like mm. together. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, I think it's it will be a nice injection with like any quite a lot of other things. Mm. Like it doesn't have to stand alone. I was also thinking about yeah, so like taking pieces out. I mean, I wear a lot of vintage and, and buy a lot of vintage. But something that, and I think that conversation is kind of separate. But I don't feel like you could take any of these pieces out and someone could be like, oh, is that like ar an archive? you know, mm, Prada yeah, or Dior or whatever. Do you know what I mean? They all feel very, very contemporary, those pieces. And I feel like, yeah, I would want to, like, take those. But they, and they would work with any wardrobe as well as they work as yeah. styled in the collection. Yeah. Do you think these clothes 100%. will age well, in a sense? Yeah, I think lots of them will, actually. The, the, Do you mean in terms in of...? In terms of the silhouette and the cut, yeah. I think there's things that, yeah, can transcend the season, for sure. Um, in terms of where we want um, Sunny to go from here in, in, as a kind of observer, and, and that also means what, where do we want Milan fashion and Italian fashion to go forward? Um, do we have any kind of, you know, opinions of, you know, they should do this or they should expand? I think personally, I think they would be great to expanding into swimwear and um, mm. lifestyle in that sense. And it is, uh, aesthetically, this is a brand that could easily go into lifestyle, mm. in my yeah. personal opinion. Um, you can imagine a beach towel printed yeah, with those 100%. massive stripes and reading sunny yeah, of course, yeah. in yellow. Hello, product development. <laughs> yeah. um, We're really giving them some good tips today. <laughs> no, but it's, where do you think is their kind of capacity now from now on? Oh, it, like five years is now. It could period. be all of that, because like I was saying earlier, it's this hol holistic aesthetic that they're pushing out there, so it mm. does lend itself to like, I'm seeing ceramics in the mm. shop and I'm seeing like, book collaborations or all these other things where they can extend their creativity mm. that's beyond the clothing. So yeah. and maybe that's what this new space the will Biancas. give them. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, that for me is a no brainer. I could really mm. see that working. I agree. I think the lifestyle thing, like what you said, is a good point. I think they've already created that through Instagram, like yeah. through their way of marketing, like through their, and they've nailed like so many markets now. And, and like once they hit Milan and it's, you know, as it comes over to Europe, I think strongly, I think like the lifestyle is just a no-brainer like for them to expand into um like homeware because it feels homeware. like it's already that brand yeah already. yeah it just, it they've already those products and those extensions yeah. to the lines for sure yeah and with the everyday i wear sine you know like that's just already a thing you know so if yeah. they push that i think it's yeah do we think there is capacity in terms of design for this brand to become you know the next big um yeah let's say, i mean don't murder me, but the next big Prada or the next big <laughs> Italian house that, you know, or, or Versace or whatever, like, yeah. in, or Fendi even, um, that we're going to see, like, oh, they're going to last for next 15 years. And but maybe they can be in a different way. You know, it's a different customer. Mm -hmm. It's a yeah. different... So maybe yes, yeah. but completely different to those mega brands, for sure. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. they'd have to sort of really establish and lock in their customer to, to make that happen. But I think that there's potential for that if they play it right, which I think they're doing because they have that marketing, yeah. they understand social media. I think they're quite clever with these things. So it's got the potential for me. I think there's kind of a bit of a tension in where they could go with what they're doing. Because if you look at the styling with for some of the looks, like. It's pretty, you know, basic. Yeah. It's pretty like street style, kind of like. I mean, I'm so basic, it's fine. But like these, you know, these crop tops with the kind of puff sleeves like, and like, you know, paired with the big platform. Like you can see that immediately, like bang on a, a Bella or a Gigi or whatever. But then on the other side of that, like, you know, they. It's such well done fashion that collectors would be interested in and buy. It. They have. They're kind of hitting both ends of this spectrum, right? And I think it would be really interesting to see if they can continue to dominate both worlds. Yeah, and they work with Italian factories, it's all proper craftsmanship, so I think yeah. the quality of yeah. the product yeah. really high, makes yeah. a big difference. And mm. 
Yeah, because also find out, uh, you want to say oh, I just wanted to say something really quickly, mm. stepping away from fashion, because <laughs> it gets so boring after a while. Um, <laughs> the whole... You need that T-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> no more T-shirts. <laughs> the whole, uh, like, foundation kind of thing that they're doing, I'm really interested to see how they can push that, mm. um, because there's nothing more selfish in creating something that you can't give back. Um, yeah. Therefore, I think if you have an environment where you can enable people who yeah. don't necessarily have the skill set, don't really know what's going on, um, need to learn, want to learn, then I think that's, that's amazing. I mean, we don't have anything like that in London. Yeah. It's kind of like a mini school of, yeah. of teaching the next generation. And I think that's so important in this oversaturated market of just monotonous, you know, Instagram and everything else. I think it's so important to, to have such an establishment and to be able to give, give back to the community. 100%. And um, why aren't we doing this here? Yeah, well, I, I want to, <laughs> Maybe I'll do it. No, that's a great question. Like, why do you think London, which is so much about, and we, what well, we already said, it's so much about emerging names. Yeah. I, mean, I think it is, we have to really admit that the schedule and people that are in charge of the British Fashion Council and everyone, they are really supportive of emerging names, mm. more, more so than in any other place where it's like you actually get your kind of moment to shine and it is up to you to what you can do with it. Yeah. Why do you think there isn't, you know, there isn't a Sunny Bianco or, um, or that kind of Fondazione Prada or anything like that? Why do you think there isn't that? Just, I just I, you go ahead. I, mean, I just don't think there's the money. And I just, yeah. I think that people are, I don't know, but I, I think it's about the fact that there is just much more money pushed into a certain type of brand in places like Milan. And I think that what the British Fashion Council, how do I express this? I think what they're doing and they do so well is to you know, support young designers, but I don't, I don't think it's enough. I'm not going to comment on the British yeah. Fashion Council. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, fair, fair, no, fair, no, no, fair. Not on that part, but fair. in terms um, of the space. In terms of the space, I will definitely back up your point in money. Mm. However, you can get money yeah. from anywhere in the world. And I'm not saying I am like finding all the money and like, <laughs> the money. In. <laughs> but yeah. I'm saying that, uh, I mean, if you really want something, you can make it happen. And the only reason this does not exist in London is because people are in competition with each other. Yeah. Yeah. Nobody wants to help each other out. Everybody's just so selfish and has this kind of like, I think that's because it's so hard. Like, it is fundamentally so it hard. It is hard, it is. But I just don't think that's, that's an excuse. And, like, I've been in a position where there's, there's people who... Um, I n don't put my face out there t to what I'm doing because I don't believe it's about me. It's, it's about what I'm doing. Um, however... I've had people come up to me, to me and be like, oh, I, I saw you at, at the event, like, really cool. And I'm like, well, why didn't you, why didn't you come up and say something? Because that moment lost could have been something that we could have discussed about. Mm. And that's the stigma. That's, again, the social media stigma of people not having the courage to step past the screen mm. and have the courage to come to somebody and say it to their face. And that's the real problem. That's the problem. That's, that's a good um, answer to what is happening here as well. Okay. <laughs> no, it is. No, 100%, because there is a conversation that I 100% agree with you. There is a conversation that happens in social media, and then taking that and putting it into practice is often lost. And I think, especially when a market is so saturated as London, you have this competition that's so severe, and it's like, you know, you, you do live it through social media. And then when it comes to actually supporting these, desi these designers, it's kind of gets lost. Whereas, I think Sunny is using yeah. the opportunity sure, yeah. of the Milan schedule not being saturated at all. Yeah. <laughs> and them having, you know, on a day like today, they have one of the hot, like, hottest like, spots yeah. on the schedule. Um, and they're saying, OK, great. We know that we're one of the like, younger people doing something relevant here. Let's use it in a certain way, which I think is really, really positive, really, yeah. really exciting. Sorry to interrupt, just one more point going back to their Instagram, um, their stories, obviously like Instagram is the biggest platform in the world right now, but 
their stories just feel so honest. Mm. Like the things that they were recording were just so, it was just like, it was through their eyes. And I think mm. that's really important to be able to communicate that. Great. Do, do we any, anyone has anything more to say that they haven't said? We can, um, yeah. I also well, think with the that. London thing, I'm going to just, I think with the London designers, why? It's because London designers and London fashion is so much more experimental. And I think they just, we're just so much more unapologetic in like what we're designing. And that's like harder to get support for, I think yeah. always, because you're not designing to sell really. You're trying to like create and make art. But I think that always like bridges a bit of a gap. And I feel like Sunday is still very wearable. You know, like they still sell quite well. Yeah, and well. they're using commercial success exactly. to then give back, to which guy, is what yeah, we're all exactly. agreeing to really It's so funny that that thing kind of equates to like not being able to drum up the money. Like so much of what London yeah. is doing is pushing a you know, massive vision and a cause and a point. Like why is that yeah. not, why can that not equate to Getting money, something good yeah. And making a big creative change. <laughs> we have some technical difficulties. And it should. <laughs> um, but um, I'm sure, yeah, hopefully we captured your, um, what, what you said. Last <laughs> comment, <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> I think what we can say is that we can all hope that what is happening with Sunny that can hopefully inspire um, so, sort of a change in London as well, and that we can find these brands that are creative and commercial at the same time and that are, as Prior said, giving back to the community in a certain way. Hopefully you, then. <laughs> as we heard, it, we, heard it, we heard it here first. But um, if we're all um, happy, should we give a round of applause to Sunny? Yes. Absolutely. Sunny, 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 whoever they are. Sunny.